we present Genius, the Eureka-driven plot contest. Here is your host, Dave Gorman. Hello. I'm Dave Gorman, and welcome to Genius, the show all about your ideas. Every week, myself and a celebrity guest will be stress-testing the perhaps ridiculous, maybe unworkable, but hopefully genius inventions, schemes and policies thought up by you, the Radio 4 listeners. We asked listeners to get in touch with their ideas. Within a week, we'd received 10,000 emails. Obviously, 8,000 of those came from people offering me porn, Viagra or a penis enlargement. (laughs) And while at least one of those might well be a genius idea, I'm afraid they weren't quite what we were looking for. Other ideas that didn't make it into tonight's show include disposable bins, peanut-flavoured crisps, and making Finland smaller. (laughs) Now, the person with the best idea tonight will be taking home the Genius Trophy. I know you can't see this at home, but I'm sure you can tell from the gasp in the auditorium here that this trophy... (laughs) ..is not some cheap and tawdry trinket we picked up for tuppence from the shop next door. Trust me, this is a fine piece of precision-moulded celebration hardware. (laughs) Now, genius is a word much overused in the entertainment industry. If a magician makes an elephant disappear in the middle of a football field, that doesn't take genius. Skill, yes. Talent, yes. An elephant, certainly. (laughs) But not genius. But working out how to make an elephant disappear in the middle of a football field, that surely requires genius. My guest this evening both performed and devised that very illusion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the magical genius that is Paul Daniels. Uh, Paul, uh, a disappearing pachyderm, is that your most genius of tricks? Best done on radio. What about um, any sort of genius ideas outside the field of magic? Um, I would like to have uh, credit cards all to be called debt cards. And then you would think twice about saying, just add that to my debt, (laughs) wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Um, I have to say, I would love to be in a shop where you were spending your credit card just for the opportunity of saying, is that your card? (laughs) I think my my best idea is to get rid of airbags, get rid of uh, seat belts, because they are giving everybody a false sense of security. And I think if you really want road safety, you should put a spike coming out of the middle of the steering wheel. <laughs> and man, you'd drive carefully then, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Do you want another one, just in case you want to edit this? Yes. Um, right. You can, if you like. I mean, I like that one. Uh, Not a lot, but I like it. Uh, <laughs> ah, you clap, you clap, but I'm working in with me foot. <laughs> it's time we should get on with the show. Uh, we, we have several people here to pitch their ideas. At the end of the show, I'll be asking you for your two favourites, and then the audience will judge uh, which is the overall winner. And the first potential genius idea comes from Simon Stevenson of Oxfordshire. Dear genius, I think there should be a stupidity test at cash points. If every time someone had to try to withdraw cash from a cash machine, they were asked a random question of common sense and only got their cash for correct answer, then I believe that eventually, by evolution, the world would become a smarter place. OK, well, I mean, they already have this in a very basic form. It's called remembering your PIN number. <laughs> um, but, Paul, what, what do you think? What's your first reaction to this? Well, my first reaction is that the queues are long enough already, you know. Um, I've seen them. One doesn't go to such places, of course. One has a man carrying the money round for one. But, uh, but I have been amazed by cash point machines, that there's not something that, like um, a fingerprint recorder reader... Because there doesn't seem to be much in the way of security on them, does there? You know, if I bonk you on the head, uh, I've got your card. I seem to be able to get in there and do it all anyway. But uh, but, uh, slowing down the process... Well, he's he's not just trying to slow down the process, he's trying to evolve humanity. It's a sort of... (laughs) It's a kind of geek fascism. High right. (laughs) Yes, That's what but, you're proposing. I, well, I, I, yeah. Yes, but look at him. He'd never get any money out. <laughs> would he? I mean, I got it all me. out earlier, <laughs> just in case. Well, I think if they do do this, they should they should have like quite easy questions for a tenner. Yeah. <laughs> really hard questions for like fifty quid and over, and impossible questions if you want to print a mini statement. <laughs> 
that should be within the rules. Uh, when you say uh, a question of common sense, uh, do you mean general knowledge? Because it feels like a pub quiz machine that you yeah. play for your own money at the moment. <laughs> I was going to try and stay away from sort of general knowledge and just more kind of common sense. Well, go on, then. Um, should you encourage children to run with scissors? <laughs> Does a snake make a good household pet? <laughs> See, now I'm worried that I won't get any money out. <laughs> Seeing as this is your idea, it makes sense that you, you should be prepared to live by this, uh, this system yourself. <laughs> that, that's fair, isn't it, obviously? I, I fear it is. Yeah, OK. Uh, in which case, um, obviously, as a contributor to the show, we are paying your travel expenses. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, those travel expenses are in the bank right now. I'll, I'll play the bank. Right. <laughs> and if you could play Simon Stevenson, you. Okay. Um, I see the floor in my plan. Okay, so no. <laughs> well, you, you don't know that yet. You, you don't know. Uh, so I'll, I'll play the cash point. Uh, so I'll, I'm giving you a, a cash point card now. If you could just give it me back. Okay. Um, <laughs> Would you like this transaction in English, French, German or Spanish? English. English, good. Um... <laughs> was, was that the question? Was that, that, that the question? Uh, no, that wasn't, no. The, that wasn't the common sense question. <laughs> uh, the question comes after you've entered your PIN number, obviously. Uh, so enter your PIN number. <laughs> dip, 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 dip. Dip. I like the bips, I like the fact you're trying. Um... <laughs> OK, the, the machine's thinking for a couple of moments, verifying the number. Would you like a mortgage? <laughs> no. OK. <laughs> Was that the question? No. <laughs> this is the question. Uh, who was the first man in space? Uh, <laughs> Yuri Gagarin? To eat a cheeseburger. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yuri Gagarin. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was John Young in 1968. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it, it seems to me that if, if the world adopted your scheme, uh, it, it can't be a genius idea because you wouldn't get any money, which proves that you're not a genius in the first place. Uh, You've concocted an idea that robs you of your own money. Uh, I did propose that I would have a hand in writing the questions. That's genius. <laughs> it's decision time. Paul, I'll be honest with you here. The producer of the show is trying to encourage me to have a catchphrase of some kind, and he suggested that I say, So, Paul, is it genius or heinous? <laughs> However... <laughs> no! No! <laughs> That's not my style. I can't go there. Uh, and I think I've come up with a, a version of my own. I think it's a little bit better. Uh, so, Paul, is it genius or not? <laughs> I think this contest will put up an absolutely fantastic fight uh, in defence of uh, a pathetic suggestion, <laughs> really. And <laughs> so I don't think that's genius, really. I'm sorry, young sir. You'll have to go and pay your own fare home. <laughs> Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, same thing. OK, well, our next idea comes from Karen Watson. Dear genius... How about putting spoky dokies on the Millennium Wheel? <laughs> Concise. <laughs> explain what, I'll tell you why I'm laughing. You explain what spoky dokies are. Well, it is, this is the first question I was going to ask because there has been some. There was some discussion in the genius office when we, when we uh, had your suggestion. Uh, we weren't sure what spoky dokies were. There were two schools of thought. Uh, I'll demonstrate using a bicycle that we have brought into, into the studio just, just for this very purpose. Some people uh, believed uh, there was a thing schoolboys would do where you would uh, take a playing card uh, so that it would make this kind of noise. Very exciting. You could pretend you were on a motorbike. Mm. Uh, <laughs> however, there were other people in the office who thought they might be the sort of little plastic beads that you, you attach to the spokes of a bike, and then as the wheel rotates, the beads sort of slide up and down and make a nice sort of clickety-clackety sound, uh, something a little bit like this. That's it. It's that one. Mm -hmm. OK, it's the little clickety-clackety coloured plastic beads yes. that adorn the spokes of a bicycle. Now, the reason we didn't know 
uh, that those were called spoky dokus is because when we eventually found some it, for the purpose of this demonstration, uh, they were just called the rather prosaic snap on bike spoke beads. <laughs> OK, so, so now we've established what we're, we're discussing. It's little coloured beads on the spokes that make nice clickety-clack sounds. Paul? Well, I like that, then. Oh, OK. I like that. <laughs> I like that. It might make a noise loud enough to wake them up in the Houses of Parliament opposite. You know? <laughs> but I think it's a really nice idea. As long as they don't start doing silly things like advertising on it or stuff like that, you know. So, sorry, can I just clarify? You think spoky dokies on the Millennium Wheel <laughs> are a good idea so long as they don't start doing silly things? <laughs> yeah. You see, in my world, that's perfectly normal. OK, well, the only thing I, I should point out is uh, on, on the bicycle we've got on the stage here, they make a nice clickety-clackety sound. It's quite gentle, it's quite pleasing, it's quite hypnotic. However, if you scale that up, to the size of, of the Millennium Wheel, I don't think it's going to be quite so clickety-clackety and pleasant uh, in its way. Uh, the Millennium Wheel is huge. It is uh, three times the height of Tower Bridge. Mm -hmm. We recorded the sound of Spokey Dokus, uh, as we now know them to be, and, uh, and we used some sophisticated uh, technology to kind of scale up the sound <laughs> to replicate the noise uh, that would be made if we scaled up similarly sized Spokey Dokus. To, to look right and, and to fit on the Millennium Wheel. This is what it would actually sound like. <laughs> now. <laughs> and, and you're saying you don't like that? That I like a great deal. I think put a cuckoo in Big Ben as well, but... Um... <laughs> so... I don't know, now that you've heard the kind of... Do you really think that's going to play along, along the Thames, this huge, thunderous noise? Uh, you, you're still confident? It's achievable, yeah. It's achievable, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the spirit. Um, uh, Paul, are we looking at a genius? I, I think we are. I, 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 I ponder upon her sitting on the opposite embankment, looking at it and thinking, what could I do with that? And she's come up with a funny idea. I think it's funny, and geniuses are funny, and funny people are geniuses, aren't they, Dave? Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Karen Watson, uh, it's very good news. You are indeed a genius. Well done, you. Thank you. Now, our next idea comes from Adam Shipway of Exeter. Dear genius, to save one of those pennies given as change, why not produce a 99p coin? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, the 99 pence coin. You can actually get a 99 pence coin. Um, you need to get 99 pennies um, and some super glue. <laughs> And we've made one for you there. Now, it's a bit cumbersome. So I'm presuming you're talking about a shorter, flatter kind of design than yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. One coin. Just one coin? Yeah. Well, that is one coin. It's just a very big fat... <laughs> it's about the size of 99 pennies, uh, basically. Um, there it goes. Uh, it's 99 1p coins. Yeah. But they're glued together. Yeah. <laughs> OK, fine, it's your idea. <laughs> Actually worth more than 99p, cos you've got the cost of the glue. You're absolutely right. Of course I am. I'm always right. It's probably worth a pound. <laughs> I think this is a brilliant idea. The two coins I would like, and, and it's sparked off purely by this genius sitting here, is the 99p coin and the 95p coin, and then we're well covered. I think this is absolutely a great idea. I don't know about you, Dave. I'm never fooled by a thing that says £9.99. I always think tenner. And if you want to stop that nasty habit of salespeople, I suggest you go to the bank, get big bags of pennies, like he's glued them together, and when you walk up the counter, they say, that's £4.99, you go, there's one, two, three, four pounds. Just a minute. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five. They'd stop charging silly prices. That's what I think. Absolutely. And, and now that I know that you collect pennies yourself, I've got 99 presents for you. Uh, <laughs> in one handy form. And that's doubled me fee straight away. Right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My issue with the 99p coin is how do the 99 pences get into your pocket? Because no shop's going to give you a 99 pence piece in your change because 
you never spend anything that's something in a penny and not just give them a penny. Your wage slip isn't going to come up to something in 99 pence. It's only shops who are ever going to be given them, but they need people to have them before they can be given them. <laughs> Unless shops start charging a pound and a penny for things and you give them two pounds. And then you'll get... <laughs> this show's getting to me, isn't it? <laughs> yes. I, I thought maybe you should have a pound coin which has a slot in it that you can put a penny into. <laughs> so that the pound without the penny is worth 99 pence, but combined, it's a pound. It's a logistic nightmare. Oh, my idea. <laughs> you come round here with your 99 pence coin idea and all of a sudden somebody improves it. <laughs> Darling, who the hell spends pennies, anyway? One just spends tenners, twenties, fifties, you know, things like that. So, pounds don't come in, pennies don't come into it. Paul Daniels, man of the people. Keep the... Uh, <laughs> Paul, is it genius or not? <laughs> Despite your arguments, I think I would have a use for a 99p coin, cos I only buy things one at a time, unlike you, you rich bitch. <laughs> oh, it's a dream come true. <laughs> what, being rich? No, I, I bought the Paul Daniels magic set when I was ten and I had no idea you'd one day be calling me a rich bitch. <laughs> I think it was £9.99. <laughs> Adam Shitway, I'm pleased to tell you, you're a genius. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, now, our next idea comes from Tom Rowson from Wandsworth. Dear genius, I think that the Houses of Parliament should be run by the rules of just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just check, Tom? You, you're 15 years of yes, age. That's right. <laughs> this it just melts my heart. It really does. It? <laughs> if you read the papers, you'd think we lived in Yob Britain, wouldn't you? And here we are with a 15-year-old boy who's trying to civilise politics. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Paul, I think you're approving. I can see a smile. I think it's great. I really do. I'd like to combine that with the Japanese method of board meetings where there's no chairs in the room. You all have to stand up for the meeting. So their meetings are much shorter than ours. And I would like to take all the chairs out of the seats, out of the House of Commons, House of Lords, sell them on eBay, make a bit of money. And then um, and I would like to have Nicholas Parsons as the Speaker of the House. And I, I, in fact, I'd like to get rid of them all together. I'd like to get... <laughs> You we... took a bit of a leap at that point, didn't you? <laughs> and we all vote on the internet and all that. One minute they were all standing, the next they didn't exist. <laughs> I can't quite keep up with you. Uh, Tom, are you suggesting this, this should apply to everyone in the House of Parliament? Absolutely, yeah, because you couldn't have double standards because there might be people taking advantage of it, possibly. Yeah, I'm just thinking even, like, the, the guy in charge can't say, order, order, <laughs> gone, immediately. <laughs> Here, here! Oh, so many things that get undone. But what would the penalty be as well? Well, uh, control would pass to the opposition. <laughs> we wanted to get some speeches, but, but legally we're not actually allowed to play you any speeches from the Houses of Parliament. They, they won't let us. Uh, but we have found a, a, a recent speech from a, a well-known politician. We chose them at random. Boris Johnson. Uh, <laughs> We can't bear a whole minute of him, so we're, we're just going to give you 40 seconds. Paul, if you, if you press button number two... There, button number two? If you, can, you, you can have a little go. OK, now, we'll, we'll play a Boris Johnson speech. Obviously, he's not going to stop when you ding, because he doesn't know you're doing this. Um, <laughs> uh, but whenever you hear hesitation, repetition, deviation, press that button, and we'll see how many times he would have been stopped in his 40-second speech. And let's just see how modern politicians actually sort of fare under your system, Tom. I look forward very much to being part of a oh. revived and reviving <laughs> Conservative party in the House of Commons. I think we've had a fantastic night tonight. It's gone much better than... It's gone much better than the last time I was here. I'm afraid... Actually, I'm not so afraid. I, I, I'm rather... <laughs> than we have seen the beginning of the end of the Blair government. And we are. We are. Yes, we are. And we are seeing the beginning of a revived and reinvigorated Conservative 
party, which will replace will replace that Labour government. Now, are you thinking? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking on the head and go home for breakfast. Thank you very much. But what about some good speakers? I think perhaps uh, the, the greatest British politician, certainly uh, by popular opinion, perhaps the greatest speech ever would be the We Will Fight Them on the Beaches speech by Winston Churchill. Uh, we're going to play that for you now, and I'll stop it when he repeats. OK, so here comes Winston Churchill. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the... Now... <laughs> The problem with your idea there is that had this been in place when Winston Churchill was speaking, Chamberlain would have taken control of the House. <laughs> we all know his policy was appeasement. <laughs> we would have lost the Second World War. Now, <laughs> is that a price worth paying? Well, I think that it would have been a highly superior speech from Churchill if he hadn't been able to repeat... We might have actually got it done much quicker and made people listen more. <laughs> They've been listening for that 60 years. That is the youth of the day. <laughs> Churchill could have been a bit quicker. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there are positives and negatives on this one. I'm not sure which side of the fence do you think you're falling, Paul? I think the positives far outweigh the negatives on this one. I think it's a really good idea. And whether they, you would stick with distinctly within those rules, it needs a bit of thinking about. But I do like any idea that speeds up the lightning-like repartee that we never see in the current Houses of Commons. I think it's a great idea. So I vote for you. There you go. Tom Rowson. I genius. So, our next idea comes from Martin Cregan, who hails from Dundee. Dear genius, my idea is to have steel drum urinals. <laughs> Skillfully beaten into the tin bowl urinal are various panels which yield different notes when you direct the force of your flow upon them. It's got to beat just writing your name in the snow. <laughs> As I understand it, yeah. what you're proposing is something which will make this... Sound like this. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Right. Um... <laughs> <coughs> Paul, help me out. What do you think? <laughs> well, you know, I, there's so much in this. I mean, I, I can see you've prepared for this. You have three steel drums. So, are we actually going to get three fellas up out of the audience to, <laughs> to try this? Why do you think we gave you so much to drink earlier, Paul? Oh. <laughs> I mean, they can't keep the current toilets clean with this lot splashing all over the place, you know. And I think it's sexist. It's sexist. Only the men could play them. Oh, no, I think girls might make a more ambient sound. <laughs> Besides, the urinal itself you could condemn as sexist, but it, it's been a successful invention. <laughs> He's looking to spice up an already existing invention, am I right? Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. Hmm. OK, well, we do have some steel drums. Uh, we, we couldn't find anyone who could actually hold sufficient liquid <laughs> to uh, bang out a tune, uh, as it were. So, so we do have uh, some steel drum players uh, who are going to try with water pistols. Uh, just to see if it's possible to actually create a tune with water on steel drum, and we'll discover some, something of the feasibility of the idea. I'd like to invite them to take the stage right now. Please, ladies, please make them welcome. OK, in your own time, take it away. One, two, three, four... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's clearly something that could actually be developed. There is some way of getting music from urinating onto some still drum-shaped kind of urinal. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it's not up to me. It's up to Paul. Paul, is this man a genius or not? Not. 
It's funny. It's a very funny idea, and it's provided us with a lot of entertainment. But I don't think it would catch up. I mean, I, in the motorways, <laughs> which is where I mostly go. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm sorry. It's bad news, uh, Martin. You're not a genius. You came all the way from Scotland to prove that for yourself. There you go. You're not. A... Never mind. Okay, Paul. You've heard a number of ideas. You've mm. chosen which ones you believe to be genius. Uh, now I need you to name your two favourites. Two favourites were the 99p coin and the just a minute in the Parliament. So now it's for the audience to judge which of these ideas is truly the geniusistest of all. <laughs> <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, it is a simple democratic process. All those in favour of the 99p coin... And all those in favour of just a minute in the Houses of the Parliament. <laughs> Sorry, I'm giggling because Paul Daniels has just written on my notepad, Are you listening, Tony? <laughs> Behold the genius trophy. <laughs> oh, yeah. People are actually going to believe it's special if you do that too. <laughs> Tom, that is your trophy. Uh, we do appreciate it. Just a minute in the House of the Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, a genius. <laughs> OK, we've just got time to read through some of the ideas suggested by tonight's audience. We have alcoholic chewing gum, <laughs> machine washable babies, <laughs> and the frontless, backless, strapless bra. <laughs> I'd like to thank Paul, I'd like to thank our winner, but of course, uh, my thanks also to tonight's audience. They were liberally plied with free BBC wine before the show, and they've been locked in ever since, so I know they're going to be needing the bathroom quite urgently. So if a couple of volunteers would like to take to the stage, <laughs> gather round the drums, I'll take the xylophone, you will see if you can keep up. We'll play out tonight's show with the Radio 4 Genius Audience Steel Drum PP Orchestra version of the Katrina and the Waves 